Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, a third coronavirus vaccine could soon be heading to hospitals across the country. How rollout could accelerate a return to normalcy. Former President Donald Trump is speaking at CPAC right now. Why a new poll shows his political career may be far from over. A local charity needs your help building beds for children. Why their production has slowed and how you can help them get back on schedule. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Jessica Jewell. The CDC has officially voted to recommend using the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. John Lawrence explains how this third vaccine could be critical to return to normalcy. A third coronavirus vaccine could become available in the U.S. within the next few days. The vaccine is highly effective in preventing severe COVID-19. This one from Johnson & Johnson only requires a single dose. This is going to increase immediately uh, by somewhere between 70 to 80 percent our uh, ability to, to deliver new shots uh, to people uh, every week. It's a big, big deal. Health experts say the J&J &J vaccine will help get the nation toward a return to normalcy. For the most severe and critical disease, hospitalizations and deaths, um, the, the performance was just as good. This is an outstanding vaccine. Data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows just over 7.5% of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. If I were not vaccinated now and I had a choice of getting a J&J &J vaccine now or waiting for another vaccine, I would take whatever vaccine would be available to me. But despite this process, health officials stress people still need to be cautious. We're really right now in a race between variants and vaccines, and we have to do whatever we can to shut down this virus. John Lawrence, 10 News, working for you. More than 75 million doses of the coronavirus vaccine have been administered as of today, according to the CDC. Data shows nearly 50 million Americans have now received at least one dose. Right now, 1.7 million doses are being given every day in the U.S. Questions over vaccine equity continue as one congresswoman says the rollout is failing African-Americans. Congresswoman Karen Bass says online registration is making it more difficult for minority communities to gain access. There are also transportation issues for many, so she's calling for more mobile sites and community-based registration. But, you know, when we say that, it doesn't mean that people are deliberately withholding vaccines. The greatest problem is access. Now, there is vaccine hesitancy, but the access, I believe, is the number one problem. A survey by the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases found only 49% of black adults plan to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The coronavirus continues to spread across the Commonwealth. The Department of Health is reporting more than 1,700 new cases, bringing the total case count to more than 576,000. VDH is also reporting 170 new deaths, 38 from Southwest Virginia. Former President Donald Trump takes the stage today at the Conservative Political Action Conference. Here's a live look from CPAC, where Trump is giving his vision for the future of the Republican Party. He says his journey in politics is far from over. A straw poll at the event found a vast majority of attendees want the Republican Party to continue the former president's agenda. The same poll showed 55 percent of people would vote for Trump if the 2024 primaries were held today. Day. A charity that assists children in the New River Valley is in need of their own. The group builds beds and dozens of kids are still waiting for their services. 10 News reporter Taj Simmons tells us why and how you can help. Paul Mealy has a simple mission. No kid sleeps on the floor in our town. We find kids on the floor, on a piece of egg crate, on a couple of mattress uh, pads. He started the New River Valley chapter of Sleep in Heavenly Peace last August to give every child a bed of their own. The group has built and delivered more than 100 beds in that time, but the assembly line is out of service for now. 
We're completely out of beds and we're looking for sponsors to join, pledge to build beds and help us get more kids off the floor. Mealy relies on donated materials, which have run out because of the extreme demand. While their supplies are empty, 29 children in the New River Valley remain on the waiting list for a bed. We would have footboards and headboards in our dream world stacked to the roof and going after the kids as fast as we can get them to them. The group has nearly everything else to give a child the bed of and for their dreams. Its warehouse contains sheets, blankets, pillows, and even some stuffed plushies. However, Mealy says the wait between projects has left him sleepless. The need is real. Even here in Montgomery County, Radford and Pulaski County, we've got kids sleeping on the floor. This is about more than sleeping in heavenly peace. It's giving kids the peace of mind they deserve. When we leave and the kids are bouncing on the bed, literally bouncing with joy, you feel so good inside, you just want to go start making more beds. In Christiansburg, Taj Simmons, 10 News Working for you. You can find out how to donate to support the group on our website, WSLS.com. Police are investigating the death of a student at Virginia Commonwealth University. VCU says Adam Oaks died at an off campus residence early Saturday. Following his death, an investigation began and the Delta Chi fraternity was dealt a cease and desist order. The Richmond Police Department is leading the investigation. VCU police is assisting. Coming up, a student athlete who won't give up on or off the field. How her reaction to a rare disease is inspiring those around her. And tonight, the Golden Globes will honor the year's best in TV and movies. How the pandemic has changed one of the biggest nights in Hollywood. And we are still not done with the rain just yet. That and the fog. I'll have details when the rain moves out and when the sunshine moves back in coming up in your full forecast. Know your zone. Get a tailored forecast specific to where you are. Your local weather authority alerting you to the next weather maker moving into your zone, making it easier for you to plan ahead. Know your zone only from WSLS 10. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. Today is known as Rare Disease Day as thousands look to bring awareness. The same is true for one local teen who continues to win on and off the field of play. Emma Snyder was diagnosed with a rare disease that causes abnormal inflammation in the bones and affected her spine. It initially sidelined her from volleyball, basketball and soccer, but she has since returned to play after receiving infusion treatments from Duke. It's not like a cure, but it still helped a lot to strengthen mainly my spine. And after then, I had an MRI of my spine, and then that, that's when they cleared me because it was gone. When I look to her, I, I, I learn lessons, even as her dad, in watching how she reacts to this, and my, I'm humbled. Emma helped lead the Southwest Virginia homeschool basketball team to a state championship victory where she was named the MVP. Still ahead, showing off creativity in the Star City, why a filmmaker hopes his project helps put Roanoke on the map. But first, a live look at downtown Roanoke from our Virginia Tech Carillion Skycam, where it's been a very cloudy day, and now we are dealing with lots of fog. Delaney tells us when you'll need the umbrella this week, coming up in just a few minutes. A Roanoke filmmaker is showing off his hometown on the silver screen. Michael Fleming directed the short film Parallax. He shot it in and around Roanoke with a budget of just $300. Fleming premiered his film at the Grandin Theater and is now submitting it to film festivals across the country. He hopes it shows Roanoke is full of creativity. You don't see very many films being made in Roanoke, especially even short films or anything like that. And being able to put our city on the map and so, hey, this is Roanoke, Virginia. It might be a little crazy of a story, but we, we have people here who like film and, and are passionate about it. This was Fleming's first ever film. He plans to release it online through YouTube and Vimeo next month. It's a big night for Hollywood. The 78th annual Golden Globe Awards will honor the past year's best in TV and movies. Thanks to the pandemic, the show will look a bit different. Instead of sharing the same room, Tina Fey and Amy Poehler will be co-hosting from separate coasts, Poehler in California, Fey in New York. Other big stars will also show up, but the honors will be accepted from home. It will present a new challenge that hopefully will make people want to tune in to be like, what the heck is this going to be? It was such a strange year, so the award season consequently should be a little bit bizarre. 
Seats normally occupied by Hollywood stars will instead be filled by frontline workers and first responders. You can watch the Golden Globes starting at 8 right here on WSLS 10. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. You are getting a live look from our sky cam over at Liberty University, seeing that very, very dense fog. In fact, one of the areas with the lowest visibility and that bright light that you see there. Yeah, that's actually the scoreboard. It is so foggy that it just looks like a big ball of light there, and we are going to keep these foggy conditions around. Taking a look, though, at the rest of the region here in Roanoke, also dealing with that three tenths of a mile is what our visibility is at four tenths at Smith Mountain Lake. You head towards Hot Springs now at 1.7. For your visibility over the next few hours as we start to bring in more rain. And of course, as nighttime comes, we're going to see more fog across the region. Temperatures are mostly in the 50s at this point, and we've still been watching that warm front that we were talking about yesterday. It is certainly in Withville, running nearly 10 degrees warmer than Hillsville at this point. 68 degrees there, whereas the rest of us are much cooler. And that warm front is actually just to our south. It is actually going to be moving further towards the north over the next few hours. Hours. And believe it or not, as we head over the next few hours, our temperatures will be warming up right around midnight, 58 degrees. We're staying pretty consistent. And once that cold front moves out, believe it or not, we're going to have a cold front move in. So a lot going on over the next 24 hours, holding on to that rain towards the highlands, even a few showers starting to move throughout the south side region. We'll take a little bit closer look as we do have some heavy rain moving throughout portions of Pocahontas County over into Highland County too. This is tracking off towards the north east, but it's not moving very fast and the system is doing what we call back building. So more storms and more rain is forming behind it. In fact, you can see all of the rain that we have still off to our west. In fact, some of those storms are actually severe. Luckily, we do not have that severe threat in our area for this evening. We will just be holding on to some rain. We do have our flood watch in effect for the county shaded in green until 7 a.m. for your Monday. So if you are heading out the door either tonight or of course heading into work tomorrow morning, take it slow on the roads. You may definitely notice some flooding out there as especially highlands have been picking up on rain over the past several hours. Additional rainfall, of course, it is going to be highest for the for the highlands specifically Greenbrier and Pocahontas County, maybe upwards of another inch or so. For the rest of us, we're looking at less than an inch by the time all this rain moves out. Temperatures tonight will be dropping down into the 50s, but of course you have to factor in the fact that our temperatures are finally going to be dropping uh, shortly after midnight once our cold front moves through. Hourly planner for tomorrow, 57 at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. By lunchtime, our cold front is affecting us. 54 degrees is what you can expect. In fact, later on, most of us will actually be in the 40s and unfortunately once the rain moves out we start to bring in some gusty winds. We will see those gusts upwards 35 maybe even 40 miles per hour. So yes, we do have a windy day ahead of us. Unfortunately, your three day zone forecast temperatures will be staying in the 50s with the exception of south side running into the 60s again. Notice that falling arrow. Our temperatures will be dropping as we go throughout the day. 59 for the Lynchburg area here in Roanoke looking like 58 degrees and not too bad. I was able to take out the those wintry precipitation chances. We have a lot of sunshine in the next seven days. Jessica. We certainly like that. Thank you, Delaney. Coming up tonight on 10 News at 11, a man who's played a pivotal role in the Commonwealth's COVID-19 response. The unconventional route Dr. Norman Oliver took to become a medical leader. And the one thing he says is key to the health of every Virginian. Coming up, some high school football action from the NRV. The Virginia Tech women hit a speed bump to end the regular season, and we hit the mats for some ACC wrestling next in sports. Ahead for us, a new weapon in our fight against COVID is approved. How quickly will it be delivered across the country? And former President Trump is back, delivering a major address to Republicans today. What he said about his own future. All ahead on Nightly News. We put a bow on the opening week of high school football. Patrick Henry at Blacksburg. Patriots setting the tone early. Opening drive, Elijah Davis bullying his way in for the touchdown 7-0 lead. Later, Roy Gunn goes deep to Mr. Kimbrough here. 51-yard touchdown connection. PH rolling. Bruins looking for answers. Second quarter, Bryce Ferguson providing one. Straight up the gut, rumbling and a bumbling for over 30 yards to the red zone. They try to punch it in. 
But we have a fumble here. PH recovers in the end zone. Just two plays later, Gunn telling Tay Sean McCormick where to go. 28-yard touchdown score. Trace Pedigo would score on a 52-yard play before halftime. PH goes on to get the win 56-0. to zero. Thanks, Eric. Let's get one more check of your forecast. Our temperatures, as I mentioned, believe it or not, are going to be warming up over the next few hours. We will be into the upper 50s before our next cold front moves in, and that actually drops our temperatures as we go throughout the day. So a roller coaster ride over the next... 24 hours, but hey, there's a lot more sunshine in the forecast over the next few days, and I had that potential for some wintry precipitation both Wednesday and Saturday. That is looking to be gone. Things are looking much better, but we will be tracking some rain come Wednesday. Most of that will be focused towards the south, but temperatures in the 50s, that's going to be pretty seasonal for this time of year, and I know a, a nice change for a lot of us. What a difference a day makes. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the next weekend looking much better. Can't wait for that. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us for 10 News at 6. NBC Nightly News is next. We'll see you back here tonight at 11.